Hey, so this is the part where I go back and re-record all the things that I literally always forget, the shameless self-promotion part. So, uh, step one, please sub to the channel if you have not yet. That helps me out, and then you will see more of my videos when they come out. Um, second, check out the link down below to my Patreon if you are interested in personalized coaching. Um, third, I have a 15% discount to Upper Park Disc Golf, which is a super groovy company. Um, <clears throat> I threatened before that I would buy this, a Rebel, as opposed to a Shift, which has slightly less capacity. I want to like that one better, but this one has more space. I understand the argument. So I'm going to do a review on this uh, next-ish. Uh, and you can get one of these for 15% off with the discount code below. You have to click my link and enter my code, and then you'll get 15% off. And that 15% will go directly to me for being a part of the ambassador program because that company is super cool. Um, Shift, also awesome, but sold out currently. So I have a review up on those. And I'll do a review on these. Um, Patreon, sub to the channel. Feel like we're forgetting something else. Hmm, what is it? I don't know. It'll come to me as soon as I stop. On to the video. Hey, internet. How's it going? Uh, okay, so one leg drill. I feel like I finally have a complete idea of what this drill is and how to make it useful. It's not quite in the condensed YouTube nuggets category yet, but it's getting close. Um, <clears throat> so my friend and coach, Blitz, not my coach, but a coach. Coach Blitz uh, just recently, recently-ish, like last three weeks, I think, did a video um, that included some consideration of my one leg drill and comparing it to other styles. Um, so thank you. That's awesome. I appreciate the consideration and I'm grateful for the visibility. And uh, to be perfectly honest, Blitz completely destroyed that drill. Um, so it's now dead. He threw 69 miles an hour, I think, out of my one leg framework. So that's insane, first of all. Um, I, I Honestly, I don't recommend anyone try to do that. Um, Blitz is a very talented athlete and he knows his body and what's going to cause injury and what's not. And nothing he did was remotely unsafe. But if a mere mortal were to try that drill and try to throw 69 miles an hour, catastrophe might happen. So I wouldn't suggest that. I wouldn't suggest doing this drill without warming up sufficiently. And I wouldn't suggest doing it at full power without having a workout regimen that includes hip strengthening, basically. Um, but I haven't had anyone have any problems with it. So I think you're fine. Just keep it below 70% and don't do it cold is what I would recommend. Um, so all that stuff said, I think that Blitz missed the mark a little bit. And that is not his fault at all. And I'm very grateful that he did that video because it helped me understand the parts of my drill that I hadn't explained well enough yet. And that's because I didn't have them figured out in my head enough to share that with other people. So I'm really thankful that Blitz engage with my material in a way that helped me understand it better. And that's kind of my overarching theme of, I think that all coaches should, if not actively collaborate together, bounce ideas off each other and mess up each other's stuff so that we can all understand it better and figure out what works and what doesn't. So thanks Blitz, appreciate it. So more about my ideas of that drill. Are we comparing that idea to other styles? Uh, in my opinion, no because my thing is phase one of a five phase progressive drill. So looking at phase one and comparing that in terms of output measured in disc speed, comparing that to another style is kind of misguided. The, the point of that drill is to create an effective learning environment to teach a concept. That's how it should be measured against other things, not in terms of miles per hour. So again, my fault for not explaining that clearly. It's not on Blitz at all. Um, and then even to back up, zoom out from that, is my idea a style of throwing? No, not really. It's a progression. It's a progressive drill. So, but something I really agree with Blitz about, Blitz, excuse me, is at the beginning of that video in the intro, he says, 
I'm not really trying to teach you a style or a way to throw. I'm just trying to make everything more efficient and help you throw better. That's awesome. I love that about the way that he coaches. Um, but me, I, I am teaching a specific style. <clears throat> but I don't think that everyone should throw that style. And I don't think that anyone needs to throw that style. Oh, the only statement I'm actually making is I happen to think with my about two years of professional coaching experience, that that is the most efficient biomechanical way to throw. Um, that's great for the 27 year old Drew Gibsons of the world. That's not useful at all for the 70 year old dude that I may have to coach for. But we can still study that ideal and take some ideas from it and apply the concepts to however you decide you wanna throw. So if someone comes to me and says, how should I throw? I'm going to put you on this path and I'm going to say, okay, stay there as long as you want. Stop when you want, which Blitz did early and that worked out awesome for him. That's great. I have no hard feelings about that. So start on the path, stop when you want, take what you want from it and leave the rest. Like I'm sure someone smarter than me said that before. It's probably Bruce Lee. I'm not sure, but take what's useful and who cares about the rest of it. That's how I feel about my system and the way that I teach it. There's a lot of things that can be taken and a lot of things that you don't have to do if you don't want to. But I think that exploring them and learning them is useful and then you can apply stuff however you want to or not. Yeah, so that's that. That's why I teach how I teach. Take it or leave it. Um, but back to the progression part, this, this is a progression. It starts at phase one, goes to phase two, which is what Blitz was doing. He was adding a pump to the front leg. Uh, each part gets more complex, but the idea is that we're going to start simple, we're going to start small, we're going to isolate variables in order to learn one piece efficiently, and then we're going to build on that. So the first thing we're trying to learn is balance, limiting rotation, and how to generate power specifically in a vertical component by dropping the rear hip. So we're artificially making the front leg static. So there's static, there's active, and there's dynamic. In the first version of the drill, the front leg is static. It does not move, it does not shift. In the second version of the drill, the front leg is active. It's allowed to bend and straighten, but it does that specifically only vertically. So it's not fully dynamic yet. There's some dynamic weight shift, not weight shift, center of gravity movement stuff happening in the balance, but it's not dynamic yet. The third version of the drill is adding a weight shift now there's a little bit of dynamic. So then we introduce more and more dynamicism, if that's a word, in the fourth and the fifth phases of the drill. But for now, I'm static. So static versus active and dynamic. The static front leg, where the knee does not move and the hip mostly does not move, it drifts forward a little bit, doesn't matter. Static. <clears throat> that is a stand-in for an active and dynamic brace. So active happens when I bend the front knee and push and resist the ground. Dynamic happens when my everything is moving in a full throw. So those will happen later. Um, but to demo kind of one of the core concepts, I need a rainbow hula hoop with sparkles. Oh look, I happen to have one. So here, if my hips are flat and I say, okay, I want to throw a Frisbee far, I'm going to spin, I'm going to spin, and my hips are going to keep moving until acted upon by an outside force. So my left hip is going to keep moving forward until my left foot stops it. That's not good for a throw. Somehow, James Conrad made it work and won a very important tournament doing that. I don't know how. I don't know how he got the consistency with that style to win. Great for him, love it, not for me. So I need more containment on the front side. And I think a lot of people would benefit from more containment on the front side. So containment happens the second, oh no, I lost the light. And my lighting is horrible, no, it's still okay. Um, <clears throat> so here, I don't get containment. I get the rear leg barn dooring around the front. As soon as I take this, and move it to a hyzer tilt. Then when I wind up, my rear hip goes up, this side of the hula hoop goes up, and then when I come forward, 
that side goes down, boom. So I get my rear hip lifting up and then going down under my front hip. Simon is the first person I saw that really does this a lot in a way that's noticeable. If you look at Josh from Overthrow, you look at his footage of Simon, you can see Simon hanging his rear hip down under his front hip. It's very much visually apparent in that footage. So putting my hula hoop, this around my belt, on a tilt allows me to use gravity with my rear hip and get some containment because my rear hip is going under and behind my front leg. That's kind of the magic. So in the one leg drill, the front leg static is a stand-in for an active and dynamic brace. What does that mean? Active is just the knee pump. Dynamic is it being out here. So if I'm shifting my weight into that, now all of a sudden my force vector is not going straight up. Here in the first version of the one leg drill, I'm trying to, this is just a post. It's only putting force straight up. This is only going with gravity. It's only really putting force straight down. When I make that dynamic and I angle the front leg this way and get some offset towards my toe side, now this leg can put a force vector that way. So I have this hip putting a force vector down and forward, and I have this hip putting a force vector up and backwards. Boom, those two counter each other and create torque centered on the spine. That's exactly what I need to throw a Frisbee for. I need these to snap quickly so that I can power this on top of it, so that I can power this on top of that, so that I can have a rip out on my hand on top of that, and I get four layers of power. That's what I want. <clears throat> so we're gonna start learning bits and pieces of that, learning the vertical component of rear hip drop first. That's version one of the one leg drill. So once I get that upward force vector, then I can start efficiently turning linear hip momentum into rotational hip torque by pressing on the ground and having that force come up my leg and move my front hip up and back. So that's the magic. This drill is also a very good place to start to learn the off arm. When everything's limited to vertical, it's very easy to feel how your off arm helps with that. So if my off arm is doing nothing, and I do my one leg drill, my rear foot spins out a little bit. I'm not trying to do this, I'm just, if I throw hard, force comes out here, and it's gonna make me, this force comes out there. If I add the off arm in, I can throw just as hard. I'm gonna take my off arm, I'm gonna reach up here, and I'm gonna shoot it down towards my front foot. That gives me enough of an anchor. It increases my weight. It helps me define this axis of rotation that is my spine, my off arm, and my rear leg all in a line that way. When I define that, when I get my body on that, it anchors me in a way that I can have a hit point and have my follow through happen, but not have that drag me around. So this thing happens if I set up everything where my hit is where I want it, Everything's where I want it. And then I let that rear leg drift around. What happened to my hit point? It got all soft and it's not actually defined at 10 anymore. And I'm going to either early release and throw towards 12 or late release and grip lock and throw it way right. But when I anchor everything more, I can get a good strong hit and stay centered in my rotation. Right? So that's kind of the ultimate goal of the one leg drill is it's teaching you hyzer tilt, it's teaching you hip containment, it's teaching you how to leave this leg here and not spin it out. And all of those are kind of with the goal of presenting a framework to where you can learn how your hit actually needs to happen at 1030 and what that feels like in your body. Knowing it academically doesn't matter for anything. You have to show your body how to feel the hit lining up at 10. Only then will it make sense. So that's about all of the drill, um, but how do you know it's right? You'll know it's right if you get significantly more snap and you have a defined hit point at 10 that feels very consistent. Um, from that, you will get increased speed, spin, and power in the disc. And all of that will happen. It's, it's not effortless, 
but it'll feel like your effort matters more. Because if I'm throwing from horse stance and rounding, I'm putting a lot of effort into it. But if I put 150% effort, I get 2% more disc speed. So it's, it's not, you're wasting energy. When you get it right, more energy means more disc speed. So it's efficient. <coughs> uh, how do you know then if it's wrong? If anything buckles, we're not bending the knee in this first version. Uh, if anything spins out, if anything topples over, then you know you're not doing it right. Um, your brain will lie to you about those things. So have, have a buddy film you, get a tripod, film yourself, look at footage. Video doesn't really lie as much as your brain does. Um, so yeah, that's, let's call it there. Um, the next version of the drill is adding that pump to the front leg, but we'll leave that for another video. All right, internet, get out there and throw from one leg.